Let's begin with a new and hopeful chapter in an age-old dream of humankind to satisfy the need of millions of people for fresh water by extracting it from the sea using the power of waves and at a price that even the poorest can afford. This is Michael Pless. He's an inorganic chemist in the faculty of the University of Delaware. On a four-year journey around the world in a small boat, Pless was confronted with stark evidence of what the scarcity of fresh water can mean. He first noticed just how serious the problem can be after he left the United States and was alarmed to find he had to pay $50 for a barrel of water in one Caribbean port. Again and again, Pless and his family met people suffering from diseases fostered by impure water. Chronic diarrhea, trachoma, and schistosomiasis. Aware of the need for fresh water and seeing the endless energy of the waves around him, Pless began to consider the possibility that wave energy could be used to desalinate and purify water. The waves, he reasoned, could drive a pump, which in turn could force seawater through a filter. The idea of using wave energy for desalination had occurred to others before, but no one had managed to design a device that would do this at a low cost or on a scale appropriate to small communities. Now, after more than a decade of work, Pless is seeing his plans materialize. The desalination units, called Del Buis, now provide fresh water to a small research station in Puerto Rico. Pless spent eight years taking the Del Buis from its initial design to its first trials at sea. George Mitchison, a diver, has simplified and streamlined the installation of the Del Buoy to the point where it can be put in in just 10 minutes. Godo Lopez and Marcos Rosada are local fishermen and divers who install and maintain the devices. Doug Hicks, one of Pless's students at the University of Delaware, worked with Pless during this period, helping him to develop a workable device and to find inexpensive materials that could stand up to the corrosive saltwater environment. The main components of the Del Buoy are the buoy itself, a pump, a well, an anchor, and a filter. Do you need a lot of technology to know how to get this thing going? Uh, a, lot you know, of, a lot of implements? George, in one of your deployments, what, what kind what of tools you use? are required? Typically, typically yes. we'll use two wrenches and a screwdriver to put this thing in. Come on. That's all we need. <laughs> that is true. And these two and wonderful two, guys. Two local and two, divers. And two good divers, right. 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 Well, that's fantastic, because then it can really be used in, in places where there aren't necessarily uh, terrific technical expertise or, that's, or, or, that's or always, money. That's always been our goal. George now has this down to 10 minutes. The buoy sits on the surface of the sea. As it rises and falls with the waves, it drives a piston inside the pump unit. That draws water up from the well in the sea bottom. The water is then driven at high pressure through a sophisticated filter called a reverse osmosis unit. The filter is made of thousands of square feet of membranes, which are wound into a spiral shape that allows them to be packed into a small space. When seawater passes through the membranes, it loses its salt along with other impurities. Normally, in nature, if there's a fluid on both sides of a membrane, it will flow from the more dilute side to the more concentrated. This kind of flow is called osmosis. Desalination requires reverse osmosis. Since salt water has a higher concentration than fresh water, it would prefer not to cross a membrane in the direction of the fresher side. That, in short, is why desalination requires so much expensive energy. The importance of the Del Buoy lies in its ability to use a free source of energy, the waves, to create the high pressure required for reverse osmosis. Each desalination unit supplies more than 250 gallons of water a day and costs $2,500 fully installed. Pless designed them to be installed alone or in groups so that the total output of fresh water meets the total local demand. The quality of the water consistently exceeds the United States domestic standards. Elsewhere in the world, people must pay up to $50 for every thousand gallons of water. You can get the same amount of water from a Del Buoy for just two or three dollars.
Large desalination units, such as these in Saudi Arabia, work well, but only the wealthier nations can afford them. They are costly to build and they demand expensive fossil fuels and electricity to run. Even if you could afford one of these, you would only want to put it near a large concentration of people. So people who live in small villages or in poorer countries can't benefit from such installations. In 73 and 74, when wave energy really came, to, came into full flower, and that was the energy crisis. Yeah. And then science got um, into a kind of gold rush, and this kind of thing came up. You can see all these great equations and graphs and things like that. This was the kind of result that we got. It's very, very complex. It all looks very technical to me. Yes, it is. Awesome stuff. Look at this. Look at this. But all of this was to make electricity. Mm. The, all the, mm. all the, Look the at this floating, floating powerhouse, you oh see, designed to be at sea. Millions of dollars. So Delbo, you see, is, is a sharp contrast to this. It's very, very simple, and it embodies the philosophy. If you're going to do something that's really useful in developing countries, it has to be done very simply. Minimal tools. And easy, easy maintenance, too. Easy maintenance, it. yeah. Absolutely. Can this fee system be used really any, anywhere in the world, or is there some limitations? Well, here? it's primarily, primarily limited to the trade winds region. The, the latitude's 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. Why is that? Well, the wind and the wave conditions are produce waves that we've designed the Delboy system to operate in. This is fantastic. I never realized it would be as, as simple looking a mechanism. Where will you go from now, from here, do you think? Well, I hope to developing countries, to Somalia. Yeah. Perhaps. The, uh, I'd the, love to go to Africa. The Institute, uh, uh, the International Science and Technology Institute, who has licensed the patents from the University of Delaware, is planning the first two sets of commercial deployments sometime this year. Okay. But one set will be in the in the Caribbean on Grand Cayman, and the second set will be on the west coast, excuse me, east coast of Africa in Somalia. The obvious advantage of Plessy's system is that wave power requires none of the usual capital investment called for by the use of fossil fuels or electricity. The Del Buoy can provide not only fresh water, but power as well. The high pressure brine that it discharges crosses a turbine, which in turn drives a compressor. The compressor can power just about anything. But Pless is especially excited about how this process can make possible low cost refrigeration. In the poor villages where the Del Bui can be used, the lack of refrigeration, not just the lack of food in the first place, is often a cause of hunger. Cheap refrigeration would provide more food more of the time, from the fish in the nearby waters to the crops that the new supply of fresh water has nourished. I think the Delboy's come of age. We've reached the point now in the project where we can see that it fulfills its early promise. We can see it will be useful in developing countries. And we can be confident when we take it there in the months and years to come. We can see people benefiting from the fresh water. But I can see it going even beyond that now. I can see it going in numbers and the trickle irrigation and the growth of crops and maybe the nucleation of communities in places and desert coastlines where there wasn't anything at all before. One of the places the Del Bui will be tested soon is here, in Somalia, in the northeast corner of Africa. By opening up dry coastal areas such as these for human settlement, the Del Bui may even be able to play a role in addressing problems of hunger and overpopulation. It can provide water not just for drinking, but also for irrigation. What you or I might think of as an empty expanse of beach is, in the overcrowded parts of the world, a wasted space a place where people might be able to live. The Del Boone can make such places habitable. <laughs> 